Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one, where sadly we open one of the very few unplayable cards in the set. Looking at our uncommons, we've got a few reasonable ones. A repeal, a nice cheap answer for enchantments, which of course there's a lot of in the set. And then Hoplite, a good payoff for the Go White deck and for White Devotion. And then any good commons. The commons are actually pretty lackluster. Like the better ones, we've got an Envoy, Forerunner, Soul Reaper, but not your preferred uh, commons for sure. So I think this pick is probably just a Reverend Hoplite. It's the Thandor Mystic Repeal. Uh, Hoplite is a bit of a build around, so it's not going to be great in every white deck necessarily. But white is, for a big part, about going white and pumping up your tokens, so... If we pick this early enough, we should be able to build around it. So, I think I'm okay with uh, Hoplite over Repeal. But uh, Repeal would also be a reasonable first pick there. Alright, got rewarded with a Dreadful Apathy. Second pick. Nothing else that comes close. Omen of the Forge, Morphosis are good removal spells too, but not on the same level as Apathy. And of course, we first picked a white card, so... Ooh, Elspeth's Nightmare and Final Death. There's also an Alsaid in the pack, so... There's three potential candidates here. We've got two great black removal spells. And then we've got a very solid white uncommon too. That of course would keep us in white without having to pick a second color, but both of these removal spells are amazing too. There's also Hero of the Pride, which would be a good common to have if we end up with a bunch of token makers. So, Elspeth's Nightmare vs. Final Death. I think it's a close call. Uh, can definitely depend based on the rest of your removal that you already have. Elspeth's Nightmare has definitely the most uh, potential upside, whereas Final Death is kind of your safer pick that's uh, always going to be good, but never going to be amazing, whereas Nightmare has the potential of being amazing. So I think I'm leaning Nightmare. I could definitely see situations where if we already have some cheap removal, I would take the final death to shore up or removal for bigger things. And we do also have an Apathy already, which can deal with bigger creatures. So I think uh, taking Nightmare is fine. And it's probably enough better than the Alcid here that uh, it's worth jumping into a second color. Because yeah, having a final death and Nightmare in that pack is also kind of a sign that maybe black is open. We've got a Acolyte of Affliction as the most individually powerful card. And going three colors while possible is not trivial. We would need lots of these uh, little trinkets to help fix our mana. Or we would have to be base green to give us access to additional mana fixing. Altar can also fix our mana, but usually not a card you're excited to include. Then there's a Revoke Existence as a fine main deckable removal spell. And then there's Berserker as a decent black card, Soul Reaper. Soul Reaper also potentially quite good with a bunch of tokens from the white cards, like Hoplite, since we've got a lot of Sacrifice fodder to feed to our Soul Reaper to draw cards with. What kind of deck is Black-White? Black-White is usually about aura synergies, getting stuff back from the graveyard. It has a bit of a go-white sacrifice theme with the Soul Reaper and the lamp pads, and then making tokens in white. So that's kind of the direction you're headed with black-white. But of course there's many different flavors and uh, various directions you could still be headed within black-white. So probably between Revoke Existence and Soul Reaper of Mogus for me. Berserker probably not too far behind. And then the Acolytes as a more speculative pick. I guess I'm okay with my first Revoke Existence. Since we're a little bit more committed to white than we are to black. Now I'm looking at Agonizing Remorse and the Blight Breath. So the Blight Breath, a payoff for black devotion, which is a little bit at odds with our Hoplite. Remorse, a reasonable discard spell in the early game. 
in the late game where most discard spells would be death cards, this can at least still potentially tank an escape card in the opponent's graveyard. So it's definitely a, a fine discard spell to have in limited. If we take the blind breath, we'll have to make sure we can pick up some more blank devotion enablers, but it is potentially a nice curve topper for the deck. Yeah, I have been pretty impressed by the blind breath overall whenever I faced it. This might not be the best deck for it, but uh, I could see it being the pick here. Sure, I'll try. Now, one card that has been performing quite well for me is the Sunmane Pegasus. Just uh, a nice aerial threat makes it very difficult for the opponent to race. We did just take Blight Breath, so that makes these black creatures more valuable. But I think the Pegasus is enough better still that I'm willing to take it here. It's also pretty late carried, so green might also be slightly open. Alright, two decent white cards. Envoy and Tear of the Winds. They both want to go in a similar deck that plays a bunch of auras, which currently our deck is not really set up to be. Doesn't mean we can't pick up any auras. But um, yeah, these are probably at their best in yeah green-white and blue-white, where you've got a high density of cheap auras. And uh, having flying creatures is also quite relevant, of course. So looking at our curve, Envoy does make our Apathy one cheaper, which is not irrelevant. And it is a cheap creature to add White Devotion for Hoplites, but uh, it's not an impressive creature as a 1-2. And then there's Hero of the Winds, which is a reasonable blocker, but we would need a few ways of targeting our creatures to really uh, leverage it. But it is potentially also kind of a payoff to go alongside our hoplite if we're making a bunch of tokens. The hero can pump them up. So I think I'm okay taking the hero here. And then we'll be on the lookout for ways to maybe target our creatures. Hero of the Prides is very similar to the Hero of the Winds, just as a 2 mana 2 2 on the ground. Still a totally fine card, even if we don't trigger the ability often. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the Soul Reaper of Mogus if we end up making a bunch of tokens. Envoy here could also be reasonable if we want to focus more on the White Devotion Synergies. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with the Soul Reaper usually. And both Sentinel's Eyes and Cling to Dust are cards we could easily main deck, especially when we don't have a lot of other escape cards in the deck. Now, Cling to Dust is somewhat pricey to escape, exiling five other cards is not trivial, whereas Sentinel's Eyes is pretty cheap, only two cards need to be exiled. So I think I'm uh, leaning Sentinel's Eyes also because it helps us with the hero synergies, targeting Hero of the Winds and Hero of the Pride to give them uh, their bonus. And then Leonin of the Lost Pride, another playable two drop if we need a two drop. Grim Physician could also play well with Soul Reaper of Mogus. Otherwise, we don't have a ton of synergy with it. Second Sentinel's Eyes, second Soul Reaper. They both have their diminishing returns. So I'm not super high on either. Probably want a creature more than the second Eyes. And a Grim Physician, just in case. Alright, so first back went to right. Picked up some potential go white synergies and heroes to kind of pump up our team. We've got two Soul Reapers to maybe sacrifice some tokens. So finding more token makers and ways to target our creatures could be one of our priorities here going into the second pack. Picking up more ways to enable the devotion on the Blight Breath. More devotion for the Hoplites. Those are all things we're looking at. But uh, yeah, with Apathy, Nightmare, we've got some decent removal already, so that's nice. Alright, second pack. Well, we successfully managed to open back-to-back -back unplayable rares. Lotus and now Breach, so that's not too exciting. But uh, All Set of Life's Bounty is quite good, and it's the only card that's uh, worth considering here in our colors. 
So, pretty straightforward pick. Nothing we can really hope to wheel, sadly. Alright, Daxos is looking good. Adds a lot of devotion for just two mana. And uh, if we're making a bunch of tokens, then this also gains a lot of life. And then in this pack there's some cards we could wheel. Libation, Courser. Could be fine, even the Indomitable Will to target our heroes. Alright, this is better. Three cards I'm very excited about. One card that I would also definitely play. So we've got Drag as probably the card I'm going to pick here over Myers Grasp, although it is close. They're both quite good. And this is only single black, so it's easier to play. Uh, another Pegasus would have been great. And Aspect of Lamprey is also a pretty decent card, especially when we have the two heroes to uh, take advantage of it. So yeah, this is between Drag and Myers Grasp. And it's actually pretty close here. Our deck is primarily white, so having double black for drag might be a little bit tough. But it is the better removal spell if we can cast it. So I might actually prefer the Myers Grasp. Also, if we pick up Heliot's Pilgrim, it can search up Myers Grasp, whereas it can't search up the drag. If we were heavier black, then I think drag would be the pick. Now I'm totally fine with Inevitable End. Also easy to play. And um, can also potentially search it up with Heliot's Pilgrim, so that's definitely a card we're very interested in if we can find it. Blight Breath number two would also be an option. Hopefully we can wheel it, although it's probably not happening at this point. Ooh, another Elspeth's Nightmare. Don't mind if I do. Would also be very interested in a cheap combo trick like Karmetro's Blessing to go with our heroes. Indomitable will maybe, but can't really pass up on a, another Nightmare. Another Pegasus is great. There's a couple cards we could consider. Flicker of Fate does have some cute synergies with uh, our Dreadful Apathy, where we can use the ability on Apathy and then Flicker in response. So the creature that's enchanted gets exiled, and um, we can move the Apathy to another creature. We can also potentially reset Elspeth's Nightmare to kill another creature. We can move the Inevitable End if a better creature comes around. We can target the heroes just to get the trigger. So it does do a lot of neat things. It is a little bit conditional. So it might be stuck in our hand for a while. But uh, it seems playable in this deck. Harpy is like playable, but definitely on the low end of playable. One toughness means it dies to a lot of random effects, like uh, Mogus' Favor is a big one. Which uh, you're not too happy if your 3-mana creature gets killed by 3.1-mana aura that they can get back from the graveyard. Um, not a huge fan of Minions Return, even though it could be okay when we have to sacrifice effects with the Soul Reaper. So, I think I'm gonna give Flicker a chance here. Yeah, Flicker also plays well with our Hoplite to uh, make some more tokens. And our Blight Breath to kill another creature, so... If there's ever a deck where Flicker is good, it might be this one. Take another Blight Breath. Maybe we'll play Sentry if we need some more Devotion. Cling to Dust, although I don't know if we'll play it. Pretty nice pack for us. I'm looking at this Daybreak Chimera. Can potentially play turn 3 if we play turn 2 Daxos, which is pretty exciting. Nice aerial threats, and that's why devotion for Reverend Hoplite as well. Uh, Piper would also be reasonable when we have double Soul Reaper to sacrifice various creatures. Another inevitable end, blessing, a lot of good cards here. But uh, I think I like Chimera, and then hopefully we can wheel the blessing or like the Piper here. What a pack. 
Grey Merchant of Osphodel. Our black devotion's not super high. So it's not a slam dunk uh, pick here. There is another Chimera and another Myers Grasp. And even Amogus' favor, so a lot of uh, solid cards. So this is where we kind of have to look at our curve, look at what we already have. Could definitely use some more 2 and 3 mana creatures. Would love a uh, Heliod's Pilgrim to search up various auras. We've got two Blind Breath as our top end. So yeah, Grey Merchant doesn't look great. It's gonna like drain the opponent for 2 or for 4. Another Daybreak Chimera definitely looks good. Or another Myers Grasp, I think, is between those two. Um, in terms of removal, we have Revoke, Grasp, Apathy, Inevitable and Double Nightmare. So it's not like we have a lack of removal and then even double Blight Breath at the top end. Chimera just gives us another win condition. Right now our win conditions are two Sunmain Pegasus and a Chimera to kind of fly over, close out the game. I guess Hero of the Winds can also chip in. So we don't have a ton of ways to close out the game, so I wouldn't mind another flyer. And then by taking the white card, there's also a bigger chance that we wheel a black card out of this pack. Maybe like a Mogus's Favor of, or Omen of the Dead. This pack doesn't have anything exciting for us. There's like a Nyxborn Courser if we want a random 3-drop to add a bit of white devotion. Which might be okay. Yeah, it's probably the pick. Like, Envoy has a little bit of synergy with Myers Grasp and Inevitable Ends, and I guess Apathy. So it does make some of our removal cheaper. It does, I guess, also make our two Chimeras one cheaper, but not enough to play turn three. Unless we play turn one Alsaid. And we do have a bit of a lack of good defensive creatures in the early game, so Courser would actually fit in quite nicely. And there's a good chance we get an Envoy later, since they seem to go pretty late. So I think it's close, but I think I'm leaning coarser. And then... I wouldn't mind another... Wow. I wouldn't mind another Envoy later, but... Uh, yeah, second Hoplite. I guess we did it. Another Daxos too, so a lot of good cards. But now that we have the potential of having two Hoplites, we really get rewarded for White Devotion. And yeah, our deck is pretty good at generating white devotion. And then hopefully we can pick up some more synergies with our heroes or some other way to reward us for going wide. Lampad would also actually be a good pickup once we have another Hoplite, since then we can just sacrifice a bunch of tokens and drain the opponent out. Yeah, the Rumbling Sentry is probably not making the cuts at this point. Uh, Agonizing Remorse could be consideration. Omen of the Dead. Don't think we're interested in the Harpy. Omen of the Dead can get back some of our key creatures in the late game. Like the Hoplite, the Chimera. So that's pretty nice. We have two sack outlets with the Soul Reaper to make sure creatures end up in the graveyard. So it seems okay. Remorse is like fine, but not particularly synergistic. Um, yeah, another Nyxborn Courser might make the cut given how many Devotion payoffs we have in white. Piper would also be okay as a 2-drop. Definitely needs 2-drops more than 3-drops at this point. Courser is mainly just to combo with her Reverend Hoplites. But we have a decent amount of action at 3 mana between our creatures, the Nightmare, some of our removal as well. At 2 mana, Myers Grasps can potentially be played or revoke existence. But we don't have as much going on. Yeah, I think we'll take the Piper now for Curve. Alright, wow. We did get an Envoy, as it turns out, and we also got a Karametra's Blessing. So, Blessing is good in our deck. It's not insane. We only have the two heroes, and our enchantment creatures, for the most part, are pretty cheap, and we don't really mind if they die. So, I would mostly be playing it as a 1 mana plus 2 plus 2 to trigger our heroes, which is of course quite good if we have a bunch of tokens from Hoplite. Envoy would be another 2-drop for Curve, adds a little bit of White Devotion, and makes our removal a little bit cheaper. The win conditions in this deck, the two Pegasus, 
the double chimera aren't enchantment creatures, so they won't gain hexproof and indestructible from the blessing. So it's not actually a useful tool to save our creatures from removal, it's just going to be a pump spell for the most part. But now that we picked up the Piper, we've got an extra 2-drop, so I'm a little bit less worried about Curve. Eh, I'll try the Blessing, but we'll see. Uh, not gonna play a third Soul Reaper, not gonna play second Flicker. Temple Thief is a little bit of extra blank devotion for the Blight Breath, but overall not too exciting. Uh, Remorse I might play, but our deck is pretty synergistic, so I don't know if we'll have room for it. Mogus' Favor I'm a fan of, and we don't have a ton of escape, so it seems quite good here. Ooh, Lampad Wield. Alright, so we kinda did it. So now that we picked up Lampad, I'm actually considering cutting some of the heroes, since we have enough ways to use our tokens with our sacrifice synergies that we don't need the heroes to pump up the tokens as part of our game plan, in which case a blessing also could go. Yeah, I don't think I'll end up having room for remorse. Sadly, didn't find a Heliot's Pilgrim. So yeah, what happens if I cut the heroes? And the blessing? Because yeah, the game plan now is basically to sacrifice our tokens to the lamp hand or the soul reaper for value. We can also make plays where we kind of swarm the opponents with a bunch of tokens and then sacrifice the token that they block and kill. So we don't lose out on any value and can still potentially push damage. But I think the plan of playing the heroes with only like one or two ways of targeting them is a little bit unexciting. Now we could still play the hero of the pride as like a fine two drop. But uh, I guess it might be better than the Leonin. But we might not need Hero of the Winds as much. Since we have enough flyers to end the game with. Mogus' favor doubles up as removal and potentially a way of enchanting our own creature. Sentinel's Eyes, pretty decent with some of our flying creatures especially. Omen can get back a flyer, a Blight Breath or a Hoplite in the late game. So that seems good enough. Do we have enough synergies for Flicker of Fate? Well, if we keep the Blight Breaths, then I would say yes, because then we have double Hoplite, double Blight Breath, as well as all the cute plays we can make with Elspeth's Nightmare, Dreadful Apathy, and it can, in a pinch, I guess, target Hero of the Pride as well. Could easily cut a Lance, too. Even though our curve potentially gets up to 5, the Daybreak Chimera is more like a 3 or 4 mana play. And I could potentially cut one Blight Breath to kind of reduce the curve, since we don't have a ton of Black Devotion, so it's not like an amazing card. But uh, potentially still fine. So if we cut a land and cut a Blight Breath, then we only need to make one more cut. We could cut the Sentinel's Eyes. The reason I like it is because it is a way for our Flyers to potentially get past the opponent's Flyers. Let's say our opponent also has a Sunmain Pegasus, then all of a sudden we can turn our Pegasus into a 3-4 and make profitable attacks, whereas the opponent can't really uh, do the same. Uh, also, kind of the same goes for the Chimera, getting past potential 3-4 flyers. So that's kind of the reason why I like it. And also the fact that we aren't really using the Graveyard in any other capacity outside of Mogus' Favor and Sentinel's Eyes. So... Just using the graveyard to escape uh, one of these two could be pretty good. And uh, the eyes can also potentially target Hero of the Pride to pump up the tokens from Hoplite. So I think it has enough small little synergies that it uh, could be worth it. It's also one extra devotion for what it's worth. Inevitable End definitely has its limitations. But we don't have a ton of removal for like very large creatures. We've got an Apathy and Inevitable End, basically. For small stuff, we're good, since we have Myers Grasp and Double Nightmare. But for bigger threats, I think we'll need the Inevitable End. Alright, Blight Breath is out. 
It does make Flicker a tiny bit worse, but still seems good enough. Alright, I think we'll uh, try this and then 9-7 for the mana base looks good. Since we need double white for Daxos, Corsair, Chimera. So definitely need a bit more white and black. I've got uh, Daybreak Chimera and the Elspeth's Nightmare. Black and white, day and night. Why not? Our hand could use a cheap white card. Mogus' favor is not bad if we're like facing a random Ragehound or the Leonin. We can kill those. But Omen doesn't do anything, and Hoplite and Chimera are pretty far from being cast. So while it may look keepable on the surface, if we kind of look closer, it might not actually be a functional hand. This is much better. Might just be the lamp pad. Does give us a 2 mana play, but we've got Elspeth's Nightmare to catch a cheap creature from the opponent. Play the planes in case we draw Daxos. Alright, Moss Viper. Can potentially die to our Nightmare next turn. Could also go after the Grim Physician with the Nightmare before we play the Piper. Long term, the Viper is probably still the bigger threat. Although our win conditions are mostly flyers, so I don't care about a Death Toucher on the ground. But if they have like a Warbriar Blessing, they could use it to kill a bigger creature potentially. Although I guess with the Nightmare, we'll see it coming. Libation to get rid of our Nightmare, so we still got a 2 for 1 out of the deal. Also, we don't get to look at their hand. Alright, um, Herald, not a huge threat, so we don't have to inevitable end it right away. The one problem with holding the inevitable end is that they can sack the physician to it and then kill our piper. Could still go for the Pegasus activation and then inevitable end uh, herald. But I don't care too much if the piper dies to be honest, so we'll just activate, hit for two and then play the piper and wait a turn to see if they maybe play a bigger threat we need to inevitable end. Do have a second Elspeth's Nightmare that can also deal with it. Alright, so here we could also double block. I think I'll just take it for now. Yeah, still not gonna inevitable end the Heralds. So they're probably going to tap down Pegasus soon. But now Corsair can go in front of the Heralds. No attacks. Ooh, Farika spawn. That's a scary card. And we're flooding out a little bit. Now, putting Inevitable End on Farika spawn, not necessarily the best uh, plan. Yeah, we'll just activate Pegasus. Attack for two, and then... We'll see what they do. Probably gonna start keeping some lands in hand, in case of uh, the discard two effects. And we don't have a ton of card draw. Or other expensive cards in the deck. So 
So it's going to be Wanderer plus tap down one of our creatures, presumably. This seems reasonable. So they're probably going to tap down Pegasus here, so no real point in using the ability. So we just want to draw another flying threat here, got two more Chimeras and a Pegasus. And we can get some value out of our goats, can maybe chump the Farika spawn and then sacrifice it. I mean, for now I can just block with the Corsair. Like, I want to draw the card by sacking the goats, but they could present a larger green creature we can chump with. If they use a combo trick or like a Mogus' favor to finish this off, I'll just sacrifice it and that's fine. Yeah, Entrancing Liar can tap down our token for free. But then they won't be able to tap down something else, so... This seems acceptable. That's a good one. So I'm probably gonna wait to uh, sacrifice the goat here, so we can chump the Lamia. Sacrifice the goats so they don't gain for life. Well, they already played a Farika spawn, so hopefully they don't have another good escape card to put in the graveyard. But that's a pretty strong combo. So I guess now they can use a Lyre to tap down our goats. Underworld Charger goes to the graveyard. Alright, Flicker can maybe do some stuff. But we'll start by... Sending in the Pegasus. Now the question here is, does my opponent remember to use a Lyre on the token? Given that they're hovering on it, they probably do. So I'm not going to get to chump with my token and sack to the Soul Reaper, otherwise that would be my play. So in that case, I'm probably just going to inevitable end the Lamia. But then if they do sack Physician first, targeting my Goat, I won't have the 3 mana for the Soul Reaper to sacrifice. So maybe my play for now is just to do nothing. And then next turn we can maybe make some Soul Reaper plays. Yeah, not sure here. Alright, they did not use a Lyre. So we might be able to sack the uh, Goat after we chump. can also flicker the Pegasus to maybe get in one extra attack, although it doesn't seem worth it here. There's Chimera. Alright. So I can go Daxos into Chimera game one. I won't have Flicker fade up, but I will have Soul Reaper of Mogus at the ready. I could also just inevitable end the Lamia. And then I'll sack a bunch of physicians, but there's no longer one toughness creature in play for them to kill. So maybe we just uh, tap out and uh, enchant the Lamia here. Now Daxos does block the Lamia, but he could always decide to tap down Daxos with the Lyre. So I don't mind getting rid of the 4-4 lifelinker, which makes it kind of tough to race. But the yeah, inevitable end is also kind of helping them with the Farika spawn to an extent. Alright, just shrinks down a Corsair, that's fine. Now, sadly, this turn we don't have Soul Reaper of Mogus at the ready, so I couldn't draw a card here in response. Chimera is also exiled, so if we draw Omen of the Dead, we can get it back. 
So there was definitely a downside to not keeping up three mana. Should be relatively safe to block Lamia with Daxos. I guess if my opponent goes like land into naturalize my Corsair, Daxos dies. But that all is also the case if I block Farika spawn. And I can't really take seven. They could have also had Mystic Repeal, I guess. Alright, so we're in a bit of trouble now. We're not really doing anything. My opponent has Farika spawn that they can get back multiple times. Probably still play my land so I can double activate plus maybe flicker. Yeah, Elspeth's Nightbear would be great since it's a way for us to exile the opponent's graveyard as well. At least the inevitable end is slowly dealing with the opponent's board. They can also get their Charger back from the graveyard, which can attack past Daxos. But then they will have less fuel for the Farika spawn eventually. So don't really want to double block Farika spawn. So this is probably my block. Forerunner's a good one too. Yeah, we need some more action off the top. Alright, that helps. Can also flicker the Nightmare in case they present another creature that dies to it. So what do we sacrifice if they get back Farika spawn? Not sure. If possible, I would like to trade off for the Nylias Forerunner. So my board will be reduced pretty significantly. And then the opponent will be left with a Farika spawn, basically. So I could double block Forerunner with my two white creatures. Since if I lose a Corsair, Daxus is not going to be a useful blocker anyway. Um, and then keep Soul Reaper to maybe draw some cards if we draw a Token Maker. Although if we lose our White Devotion, Hoplite becomes a weaker top deck. Or I can triple block. Yeah, even if they have a plus uh, three pump spell, if I triple block, this would still die. And they would only kill two creatures, so... I guess we'll triple block to be safe. And then they can decide what they want to get rid of. So they decide to take out Daxos first, sure. I mean, that wasn't so bad. We traded Daxos for the Forerunner. Carry it. It's... Okay. So they can feed that to Inevitable End. I could still flicker fate the Elspeth's Nightmare here to kill Carry it. It's... I could make them discard first and then flicker fate. The thing is, I really want to get to the third chapter to exile the opponent's graveyard as soon as possible. So if I would flicker fate, I would do it now. I think I'm just going to untap. And they seem to have a response to the second chapter, maybe. Libation, sacrifice a creature. I could sacrifice a Pegasus that stepped down, but of course with a Lyre they can switch targets whenever they want. So maybe I get rid of the Corsair anyway, even if that means losing a bit of devotion for future Hoplite top decks. Yeah, it's probably the Corsair. So next turn we get to exile their graveyard, but they will get back Farika spawn first. I could have attacked with the Soul Reaper, don't think it's really worth it in case I do decide to sack the Lamia. Then I can block the one damage, since we're pretty far behind on life totals. Right, Sacks the Karyotid first. So we'll go full control in case we want to do some shenanigans like flickering the Nightmare with the third uh, chapter on the stack. That's also a play we can make, but we probably need to be full control for that to work. So opponent gets back Farika spawn. Mm, 
that happens. I guess at this point I get rid of the Pegasus. But yeah, it doesn't seem like flickering the Nightmare is going to do much for me. So the problem here with taking 4 is I go to 6 and then next turn I can tap down Soul Reaper and I could potentially fall to 1 or I could chump and sack the Soul Reaper and hope to draw some action. Although if we draw Hoplite then I want the Soul Reaper still in play. So what we're probably going to do is flicker fate inevitable ends in the opponent's uh, upkeep, hoping they don't have another cheap creature here. Alright, that should work. So I'll just untap. More lands. Alright, so probably need to go full control for this to work too. I guess we'll have to wait until next upkeep to actually kill the Farika spawn. Since, of course, this triggers at the beginning of upkeep. So I, I'm still going to fall to one, and if they draw another creature, I'm probably dead if I don't top deck. I guess now they just sag the Farika spawn instead. Hmm, I guess we didn't think this one through. Oh well, I guess Farika spawn hits harder. So they do still sag the Lamia. Yeah, it's a bit tricky here with the Flicker, since they could have just sacrificed the Farika spawn and gotten rid of the Inevitable End, but they decided to keep the 5 power creature instead. So yeah, Flicker plus Inevitable End is not always as effective as you would like it to be. Don't think we have any instant speed removal for the spawn here. So I'll take 5 and I'll probably end up sacking the Soul Reaper to itself. Hope we can top deck uh, some answers. But that's a problem. So now they can just sang the Grove Dancer to the inevitable end, kill us with the spawn. Or I guess just sacrifice a spawn and kill us with the Grove Dancer. Well, it's a lot of lands. So just playing Soul Reaper is not enough since they can untap Liar and kill it. Mogus' favor is not quite enough. Needed a Myers Grasp here. So yeah, we are dead. Ah, it's too bad. Definitely drew a few too many lands along the way. This hand seems great. Elspeth's Nightmare makes uh, every opening hand look good. Play planes in case of Daxos. Perfect. Let's have a look. Alright, Portent of Betrayal, Infuriate, Fateful End. They don't have any combos with the Portent yet. Infuriate makes it 
a little bit difficult to block. So even my Courser with uh, Sentinel's eyes on it wouldn't be able to block it. But the Fateful End also kills my Chimera. So I think I'll probably still take the Fateful End. Yeah, I think I'm fine if they trade Infuriate for my Courser. I still get to play my Chimera next turn. And no need to Sentinel's Eyes. If they want to Infuriate, they can Infuriate. And once we get that out of their hands, we're safe to block their uh, two powered creatures. Yeah, Chimera seems fine. And then next turn we can go Soul Reaper plus Apathy. Hope they didn't uh, top deck. A removal spell. Shimmerwing Chimera is pretty good. Up to one other target enchantment you control. So they can bounce the Chimera itself if we Apathy it. So it seems fine to just use Apathy on it and then play Soul Reaper. Can even attack for three. And then next turn I'll probably just exile the Apathy in case they find an answer to it. Or I could just Apathy sacrifice it now just to be safe and keep Chimera on defense. I think I just want to be mana efficient though. And Pegasus will also make it difficult for them to race. Yeah, knowing two cards of their hands, I feel less bad about uh, leaving the Apathy unsacrificed for a turn. If their hand was unknown, I would maybe lean towards just getting rid of the Chimera just to be safe. Yeah, they're gonna steal Soul Reaper. If they had seven mana, then they could have stolen Soul Reaper and then sacrificed it. Also, I guess... They would have uh, needed black mana for that to work, so never mind. I think we'll just play Piper. And then... Could just play defense this turn. Or just send a Chimera. I'll wait a turn on the Sentinel's Eyes. And then we have both Soul Reaper and Apathy at the ready, and then end of turn I'll probably sag the Apathy. That's not bad. Yeah, probably play this on the Chimera now. Got six power in the air, can potentially make it two more with the Mogus's favor. Too bad. It's a good answer to our um, enchantment as well. So, in order to get my Sentinel's Eyes back, I guess I can just double block the Trickster. Could also just sacrifice to the Soul Reaper to draw a card, but this seems like a fine trade. Did they draw the one mana minus four minus so or the bounce spell? Don't really care if they mess with the double block too much. Eh. Got our sentinel's eyes back. So I could move kind of all in on this uh, Pegasus and give it vigilance and lifelink. Or maybe adjust Mogus's favor and not sentinel's eyes since this gains vigilance anyway. But playing both would give me a two-turn clock. Although I guess Lampad could also speed up our clock if we wanted to. A 
looks like the Pegasus went to distance. Got a free draft entry, nice. Alright, one on one. Uh, this hand would love to draw another planes. Yeah, the fail case is still like an apathy and maybe a Pegasus, so. Seems good enough. Drawing Swamp, pretty bad here since our deck doesn't need a ton of lands. But I'll take an Elspeth's Nightmare. Hactos. So now what? I probably want to inevitable end before playing the Dreadful Apathy, otherwise things get a little awkward. And then I can still Apathy Hactos if we randomly roll 3. If they roll 4, Pegasus can block it. If they roll 2, we could be in a bit of trouble. Yep, they roll two. It's gonna be hard to race. So we just need to eventually find a two drop. Got a couple of them in the deck, and they all trade for Hactos. No tokens have converted mana cost zero, so those don't count. Yeah, that's a two drop. So probably play it here. Could also Apathy the War Leader, but the uh, Hactos deals a bit more damage. Hope they can't uh, get rid of my hero. And Pegasus probably stays back to block the Seder. They are forced to attack, so they have a one turn window here to get rid of my hero. Yeah, that'll do it. So we're pretty dead here. Not sure if we can top deck our way out of this. They can sack hero to the war leader too. So we're just dead to Hactos next turn. Even if we activate Pegasus and gain two, we're still dead to it. Yeah, GG's. And our opponent can't uh, mess that up since they're forced to attack. On the play, reasonable hands. Some cheap removal, followed by Pegasus. Mogus' favor on Pegasus, also pretty solid. Still lead with planes in case of a uh, top decked Daxos. Alright, definitely want to take care of Renata while we can. Not sure about that attack. 
So they've got a 3-4 on defense. I could Mogus' favor my own Pegasus to still attack into it. I could either gain 4 or just play Corsair, probably play Corsair. So we've got our opponent on the back foot, although they do have a bunch of uh, cards in hand, so... Wave Rider on defense. Pegasus can still attack. This time we can give it lifelink and vigilance, or I can just let it trade so we can Omen of the Dead it back and replay it right away. Which seems better. Don't really need the life. And I'll keep up Flicker of Fates and Soul Reaper, I think. Could also use a Flicker to move the Mogus' favor somewhere else, if that's somehow relevant. I see. So they're gonna bounce everything. I can Flicker one of my creatures to essentially keep it in play, which might be worth it. It's going to make it very difficult for the opponent to make any attacks, because then we can tag them back with it. Yeah, that might be worth it. Could also sacrifice a Corsair to the Soul Reaper, just to have an extra card in Graveyard to maybe get Mogus' favor back. Don't think I'm going to go that far. So yeah, we'll just play some more creatures out. And at some point I can sacrifice uh, creatures to the Soul Reaper to get Mogus' favor back on the Pegasus. So we can keep attacking and then Omen can get Pegasus back once again. Hoping they play something that dies to our Nightmare. So while Nightmare does have a lot of upsides, if this, for instance, was a final death instead, we could have killed the Witness and just uh, killed the opponent by now. Well, this Witness is going to get pretty large, but at least the Nightmare kills Sea Guards. And we do have a couple answers to the witness. <laughs> Double nightmare. This could be also a good time to just like nightmare the sea guard attack with everyone, put him to two. Think I'm down. Because at two life, they'll have to be way more careful of um, any attacks, and I can just sacrifice whatever creature they block to the Soul Reaper. And Hoplite is perfect here to go wide and get the last two points of damage in. Thass has their last card. Okay. So our opponents are two life, three blockers. So we kind of want to play Chimera before Hoplite. Hoplite right now would make three tokens. I guess that's technically enough to kill them next turn. So I could still go for it. But I think it's probably going to be better for me to play it slow and just make sure we have enough in case I draw some blockers or removal. And then just stay back for now. Can 
Can also open up the dead to get back Pegasus. Now the witness does trample thanks to the Forerunner, so that could definitely kill me in one attack. If we're not careful. But for now they probably have to stay back. Thassa can tap down my flyers too. So the plan of playing Pegasus and attacking with two flyers is probably not going to work. But I'm probably still going to just play the Omen here, getting back Pegasus, since we've got nothing better to do. Could have also decided to play the Elspeth Nightmare last turn without a target, just so we could maybe get rid of a uh, counter spell in their hand that they might have top decked. That seems fine. Still gonna go for the Omen play. They could have attacked with the Wave Rider and then flicker it with Thassa to have it back on defense. Alright, I guess they're just, uh, I guess not quite dead. Or no, never mind, they are dead since we can give protection from blue on Chimera. And they're only flyers blue, so that'll do it. But otherwise, the Hoplite plan was looking good too. Alright, on the play, a bit of a slow draw, but being on the play makes up for it, so sure. Got double white, as always lead with our planes in case of Daxos. One day I'll draw Daxos turn two. Perfect blocker here. Hopefully it survives. All right, that worked out. Yeah, we'll just uh, add some devotion. Don't think I want to trade two for three. Even though I don't really want to risk losing the Courser. All right, takes out Courser anyway. Attacks for four, so I guess we missed out on two damage given the circumstances. Now Inevitable Ends is looking a little bit better. And then we can still activate the Pegasus. They're making it difficult for us to keep uh, Devotion in play. Hopefully we can find some more Devotion before playing the Hoplite. Soul Reaper not a bad way to refuel, but the opponent does have a bunch of escape creatures in the graveyard here. Lampad plus Hoplite is also good, but not when we're only making one token. Play might just be play Lampad and then I can Shumblock Charger, Sacrificing Piper, draw card. And this can attack. So we've got some blockers for days here between the Piper and the Hoplite. Eventually need to find a flyer to close out the game. It's not a bad one. Do 
we kill Piper or the Oriad. Oriad seems more impactful here. And a bit of devotion with the hero. I could take 5 and then next turn go back to chumping and activating Soul Reaper. Or I might just play the Hoplite and in this case I can just chump and sack to the lamp pad. Two lands in hand. I could Sentinel's Ice, the Hero of the Pride, but it might be better off waiting until we play the Reverend Hoplite first. Playing Sentinel's Ice first gives us one more Devotion, so one more token, but I might be able to make a pretty significant attack next turn by targeting the Hero of the Pride with the Sentinel's Eyes. So I think that's my plan. And then this turn I'll probably just take 5. Could also make the case for like trading for Charger since we can exile it, but they're somewhat far from escaping this a second time. And then I can sacrifice whatever creature they would be able to trade profitably. Could keep the lamp pad back if they block it with the trickster. So then they would block maybe chump hero, eat lamp pads, they would take six, nine, down to six. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to keep lamp pad back as a way to kind of close out the game. That's fine. So they take eight. And I've got uh, four damage on the board just by activating lamp pad. It's also a good draw. So I'll just send the hero and the two tokens. I guess there's no harm in attacking with Lampad. So, a couple mana short of winning the game on the spots. But as soon as we untap, they are virtually dead. It seems safe enough to take five since I can always gain a bit of life with a lamp pad if necessary. Alright, they seem pretty dead to me. They could have Omen of the Forge for 2 damage. Wow, they got close. Alright. Yeah, they had 5 points of burn in hand, but we had 2 mana up with lamp pads to respond. You're just fuel for the fires of freedom. Alright, opening hands, no white mana. 
no creatures. It's going to be hard to keep this inevitable. And we can play with any land. And we've got uh, Apathy plus uh, Flicker Fate Wombo Combo. But uh, it's pretty mana intensive. And with only two swamps, it's probably not going to work. This is better. Man, what do I put on the bottom? All my cards are so good. I guess maybe our plan this game is just go Pegasus into Chimera, beat down in the air, and Hoplite goes. I would not mind top decking Daxos. Gives us a, two, a turn 3 Chimera potentially. I'll take a hero of the pride. No early place for my opponents. Makes it difficult to use a nightmare effectively. Attack and say go here. Opponent also black white, sample thief. So they just top deck their black mana essentially. Still like using Nightmare early to potentially grab a removal spell out of their hands before they can use it on my flyers. Could have played my own Sentinel's Eyes to play around an Elspeth's Nightmare. Ponon did not have any other spells in hand that we can take, which is why they also wanted to get it out of their hand. All right. So if possible, I want to play the Sentinel's Eyes. So this turn could go Pegasus into Sentinel's Eyes. Seems fine. So both Nightmares kind of trade blows here. Playing a lamp pad's not super relevant here. So maybe just activating Pegasus is better. Got a nice Air Force, and then Hoplite plus Lampad is a great way to close out the game as well. Chimera can trade for Chimera, but uh, Pegasus can still attack. Can probably make an all-out attack here too. So let's say I play Lampad. I have three Lampad activations at the ready. Opponent has four blockers. Um, but they're taking three in the air regardless. So they're essentially at four life. And uh, we cancel out the flyers. And then we have six one power attackers. They have three blockers. They gain one from the Eidolon too, but then the Lampad can drain them out. So I think Lampad's just game here. But for two black mana, there's not much they can do. Can also deny the life gain from the Eidolon here. By sacking our token.
Still play planes in case we top deck Daxos. Our hand wasn't super exciting. Just kind of hoping to draw into our bigger threats. Don't have any amazing attacks anymore. Yeah, I'll probably just take it. I've got a lot of removal that also deals with the heralds. I'm kind of surprised they're willing to trade 5 damage for 3 damage. And there's a removal spell. So definitely attacking, and then... Could just grasp the Heralds. Or I can play Hoplite, which makes only one other token. I kind of like playing Hoplite, that way if they keep Herald back on defense next turn, we can just grasp it. And when we have Omen of the Dead in hand... We could later potentially get the Hoplite back to make more tokens. The only downside is that we only have single black, so we wouldn't be able to necessarily play both in the same turn. I'll take it. Sure. In this case, I'm probably going to main phase the Grasp on the Typhon so that they can block the Soul Reaper of Mogus and kill it. And if they want to trade for the Piper, that's fine. So they're taking five... I think I'm okay letting the trade happen, they're pretty far from escaping this. And then I can chum block with the goats. And sacrifice it to either the Soul Reaper or the Lampad. And then maybe still play Omen. So the Herald stays back this time. Probably still sack to the Soul Reaper. It could be that dealing damage is better when they're at 8, but drawing cards kind of translates into more damage as well, so... I guess I wouldn't be able to Omen, but there's nothing too exciting to get back at the moment. Ooh, hello. Clean answer to the Nyx Heralds. That's pretty good. Probably takes out Soul Reaper. And then we can sack it to the Lampad still. So we can Nightmare the Heralds. Trying to see if we still want to attack. I think I'll be one short of killing them. Since I could Omen back Lampad, replay Lampad, sack all three creatures. But that puts them to one. So yeah, I don't think I'm attacking. Just gonna stay back and then the plan is to hopefully build up a bit more devotion, get Hoplite back from the graveyard with Omen, and then drain them out with a Lampad. Could have also gotten back Soul Reaper of Mogus and replayed it right away, and then draw cards instead. Probably still take three 
since they've got some bigger, scarier creatures we might have to chum block later. Sure. Doesn't really mess with our drain plan. So do I sack these two right now? Could also just get back Piper, which is also two more lamp pad activations. We're very close to killing them. It's just about what's the best way to do it. If I play Omen now, I can also Scry, which is pretty nice. So maybe that's a plan, just Omen back Piper, sack Omen end of turn, untap, and then see what we can find. Mogus' favor doesn't really open up any additional attacks. That's eh, not bad. Gift of Strength in hand. Play Chimera, play Piper. Still have one lamp at activation at the ready. And exiling their graveyard here is going to be quite relevant, too. Tabs down Chimera. Charger might as well attack. They've got three blockers to my four attackers. So it doesn't quite look like we have lethal. Because I, I wouldn't want to attack with the lamp at itself. So I wouldn't really get in for damage. I do have this Piper which makes an extra token. So we have six damage on the board essentially. So I could start sacrificing now. That way, if I top deck a creature, I can maybe play it and have enough mana to activate Lamp at right away. Yeah, that's probably fine. So... Pegasus is 4 mana to play, so we wouldn't have enough to sack everything to the Lamp pad. So I think for now we'll just play Pegasus, and then they should be dead next turn. So yeah, Lamp out of Death's Vigil once again. About to win this game. Their only way out is probably to draw removal for Lampad. I don't think we had lethal, because they would have been able to block my lamp pad, and then uh, I wouldn't have been able to sacrifice creatures post-combat if I didn't ch chum block the charger beforehand. Opponent is slowly coming to the realization that they're dead. Doesn't matter here what we do. As long as I don't accidentally sacrifice the lamp pad to itself before my other creatures, we should have just enough. Alright, 
5 and 2. Hand seems fine. Uh, spinner might be good enough that I want to just Mars Grasp it now. I could also just play a Lamp Hand, which can block the Destiny Spinner. Also, I'll be a little bit sad if they have a Coma Trick. I guess we'll hold the Grasp, maybe I'll need it for a Flyer. Yeah, so they seem pretty aggressive. Sentinel's eyes get in for four. Well, now the grasp's not good enough. Um, could still shrink down the spinner. But not killing it leaves the activated ability in play, which could be annoying. Although, honestly, maybe just shrinking this into a zero-powered creature means that they won't have access to their sentinel's eyes out of the graveyard, which could be a, th a good thing too. Could also use flicker, move the sentinel's eyes to another creature and then grasp it, but that seems bad. So, yeah, I'm kind of down to just grasp the spinner anyway. If they have the Allsade, I guess they can get protection from black and then it falls off. Wow, Calyx. Well, if they hit consistently, we're in trouble. Finds Daxos. So the plan is Chimera, but they can just exile Chimera with Calyx. Nightmare comes a little bit late. Although if we Chimera, they have to exile one of our uh, creatures with a minus three, and then we can use Nightmare on whatever enchantment creature they targeted. So it still seems okay. Targets Daxos. So yeah, it's just Nightmare Daxos. Camaro's back, and now they minus three Calyx, we get rid of it. Ooh, wow, Banishing Light. Can sack Chimera to the lamp pad, but we won't have any pressure for Calyx, which is kind of going to run away with the game. Thinking, like, we do have a Revoke, which could exile the Banishing Light, so maybe it's not worth it to use a lamp pad in case we find Revoke to get rid of Banishing Light. Could see that. Could also use Flicker of Fate to flicker the Banishing Light, but that I guess doesn't accomplish much. Alright, at least we got something. So opponent's playing blue as well. Not sure what my plan is. I guess I could start beating down with Corsair. But that does give them access to the Sentinel's Eyes again. But getting rid of Destiny Spinner could still be good, since the activated ability on it is quite good. Could flicker to move the Mars Grasp to kill Hero. But then we wouldn't kill the Destiny Spinner anymore. And could flicker the Nightmare too. But killing their small stuff doesn't seem relevant. So I think we just let this happen.
Don't really foresee needing Flicker of Fate here. I guess I could minus Calyx once again. If they draw a land, they're just gonna play Archon. So yeah, playing Hero, keeping up Flicker, I guess plays out better if they end up uh, minusing Calyx. It's just that we have like single black, so getting the Soul Reapers in play might be a priority too. But there's a chance we can get some good value out of Flicker of Fate. Nightmare exiling their graveyard, also relevant with Archon. So if they play Archon, they won't have access to Sentinel's Eyes. Well, if they go for Apathy plus Eyes, I guess it works out. So now we exile both enchantments with a Nightmare, so they can get them back with... Or I guess just a one enchantment. So they can get it back with Arkan. The other thing I could have considered is... Letting the Apathy resolve and then flickering the Nightmare in response to their Sentinel's Eyes. But then they would have had the Apathy back in their graveyard to get back with Arkan if it dies. So it was actually kind of complicated there. Sentinel's Eyes could be a good draw. So if we target Hero of the Pride, we have a lot of good attacks on Calyx. So we'll start there. Now my opponent will slam down a 4-4 flyer, which I currently don't have an answer to. Alright, that's the perfect answer. So how many creatures do I need to send at Calyx? Uh, I could send Hero at their face, and then these three at Calyx, and no matter what, Calyx dies. That way we waste the least amount of damage, because if I send Hero at Calyx, I would need to send two other creatures to make sure he dies. And then I would waste a little bit more damage. Alright, so now we've got the Hoplite to go white and can sacrifice the tokens to our various effects. Chimera's also great. So they do seem to be holding an instance. Could be plus two plus two. Could be a bounce spell. Don't really want to lose my white devotion when we have Hoplite in hand. So don't want to send the Hero of the Pride. Yeah, I think we just passed. Don't have any amazing attacks. Yeah, it could also be an Omen. The blue or the white one. Nothing, end of turn. So it makes it more likely that it's uh, plus two plus two, maybe. Alright. Now that we got our tokens, I think I'm fine making some attacks, and even if they have a trick on their envoy to kill my Chimera, it's not too bad. Or I could wait until I have mana to sacrifice, but with 8 tokens we'll be having plenty of stuff to sacrifice, so... Both of these can attack, and at that point I might as well send everyone that's able 
Probably want to hold back Lampad since that's her main win condition here alongside her tokens. Alright, they did have an Omen, but they held it to pump their Wayfarer. That's fine. That's why we play the Hoplite main phase. Can kill Envoy or two tokens. Probably kill Envoy. So our point's at 15. Yeah, they could be close to dead here. Next turn I can attack with everyone, sack at least five things to the lamp pad. It's five more damage. Opponent passes. Yeah, I think we just attack with all except the lamp pad. No need to Sentinel's eyes. And then... We'll see what happens. So right now they would die. And given that we can have one spare lamp at activation, it seems safe to go for it. Triumphant Surge, their own creature to gain three. Can just sack two more in response. Nah, I guess there wasn't a great window for them to do it. They had to do it before they took the damage. Because I could always just respond with one additional lamp at activation. Reasonable hand. Turn 3 Nightmare definitely does a lot of work. And, uh... As always... Play our planes in case of Daxos. Now they could have their own Elspeth Nightmare, which would be pretty effective. No, Mars Grasp. Not so bad, but still pretty reasonable here. Erebos makes an appearance. So our plan is just to try and race with our flyers. Probably still play Pegasus. That way next turn we have the option of Courser plus Nightmare before we slam Hoplite with a ton of devotion. Berserker will hurt, but once we make some tokens, we can shun block all day. Never mind. We'll see what they take. They might still go for the Nightmare, but they go for the Hoplite. Ooh, wow, Hydra's Growth. So they're all in on this Berserker. Would love to top deck uh, Inevitable End. So do we play the Nightmare anyway? Just to maybe grab a card out of their hands. Nah. I think we just uh, play Corsair, activate Pegasus. Could also just double activate Pegasus, but the extra board presence, especially if we draw another Hoplite, could be worth it. Yeah, I guess we leak a little bit of information here, but... That's okay. I think I would rather have two Swamps in play. In case they make me discard too. And yeah, now we just need to draw some token makers. To chum block with. And 
Nightmare kills Harpy at least. So this next turn goes up to 9 power. So if we gain 4, we're not dead to a single attack. Question is, do we send a Courser? I think we do. They would need a lot of Black Devotion to turn on Erebo, so that seems unlikely when they have only one Swamp in play. And we still have our Pegasus to block with too. Yeah, not a powerful rare. So yeah, I'll take it and then... Got a couple top decks that win us the game and there's one of them. Sweet. Alright, that was a close one. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, we had a bit of a rocky start, but managed to get uh, the seven wins. Storm Heralds. If this is a pack one, pick one. Anax is probably better than the Storm Herald in most cases. Singer's also quite nice, but I would go for Anax. Thaumaturge has definitely impressed me as well. It's a very close pick here between the spawn and the uh, Thaumaturge. I would probably lean Farika spawn just because I think black is slightly better than blue. But, uh,. Thaumaturge is also very strong, just two mana investment to potentially copy the largest uh, creature in play. And you can even switch targets, so it's quite versatile as well. And the Temple of Abandon, nice for the collection. Still good and limited, but it's not an exciting first pick. That being said, this entire pack is kind of unexciting. There's like a couple synergy cards, the Aspirant for the Sacrifice deck, Impending Doom for the Aura deck. Giant can be a fine curve topper, but you're not happy to first pick it. Alright, sweet. So yeah, that draft kind of showed us the power of black-white, being able to go white with tokens, and then using our various sacrifice outlets to drain the opponent to death, or uh, draw some extra cards with the Soul Reaper. So yeah, we had a green-white draft the other day, with a couple hoplites and now we had black white. I did prefer the hoplite and black white since you're happier to just uh, play the hoplite early and then you can eventually find a sacrifice uh, outlet. Whereas in the green white deck we relied on Renata providing counters, so there the sequencing of playing Renata first and then the hoplite was a lot more important. So we often were uh, just holding the hoplite in hand until we found Renata, which uh, of course is not as good as being able to play the hoplite to maybe attack and block with right away. But uh, yeah, pretty sweet drafts. Didn't need any bomb rares to get there, just powerful common and uncommon synergies, which really goes to show that this format has a lot of uh, depth to it, since that's not always the case. Sometimes you just need those powerful rares to kind of carry a draft. And while there are bombs in Theros, it seems like you can make totally fine decks without them. That's going to be it for me today. I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.